<clears throat> Oi, fellow comrades, this is Squid Tart here, back with another college football 2021 prediction video. And today, we're finally back to doing some more of the SEC teams, starting with the Kentucky Wildcats. So I've done a few SEC teams already, and now that we are moving towards getting uh, the predictions done and moving towards the... Uh, basically, the postseason predictions on my end. I'm going to go ahead and finish up doing these SEC teams, and then we'll do just that. So we're getting really close to the college football season. Not too much longer until we finally get to watch some of our favorite teams either do really good and, and, and impress us or do really bad, and we just suffer through hours and hours of pain. But, hey... You know me, I'm a Tennessee fan, we already do plenty of that. So if you're suffering from your team doing bad, trust me, I know. Anyway, let's go ahead and get right into the video. If you guys wanted to uh, support the channel or uh, do anything like that, please feel free to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more sports stuff. I do a lot of this. If you guys want a channel update or anything like that, just know that I'll be doing more of these prediction videos down the road until we finally get through the entirety of the Power 5. If you guys are interested in hearing some of my Group of 5 predictions, some, such as teams like uh, South Florida, UCF, of course, uh, some others, maybe uh, BYU, just uh, check out my uh, Squid Tard Twitter and I'll make sure to post that on there. I feel no need to make that a video in some sorts. For some teams like that that aren't even uh, Power 5. So please do note that those will be on my Twitter page. And I'll put that in a uh, I'll put that in a thread. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Let's get right into these predictions, shall we? So the Kentucky Wildcats this season. Let's talk about them for a little bit. So basically, what if you guys have seen some of my SEC previews, my predictions. And if you saw my SEC uh sec conference preview video that i did a couple of months back i talked about kentucky and i talked about more or less that they are a team that i'm actually really high on this season the thing is with kentucky is that ever since uh maybe seven you go back to 17 or even before that kentucky has always had a pretty good defense they haven't the problem is they haven't had a offense that's worth anything other than a butt but that's two butts. Kentucky this season is actually bringing in a pretty good offense, but more importantly, their defense is very, very stacked this season. And I'll talk about that a little bit more as we do, uh, dive in to uh, their to their talent. So taking a look at what they've got, of course, uh, their quarterback, of course, Terry, he's gone for the season. So now they're bringing in Joey Gatewood, who was a transfer from Auburn last season, who never really got the chance to uh, shine much last season. So now he's going to be coming in as the starting quarterback for this season. So we'll have to see what he can do. Excited to see exactly what he's going to bring this time. Uh, if for the running back, Chris Rodriguez Jr., he's a junior this season, and we'll be looking forward to seeing what he can do. Kentucky's bringing in a pretty, pretty good run game. And uh, if they have an offensive line to back that up, I'm sure that that will line up for them pretty well. And it's Kentucky's offensive line, they've got some pretty big playmakers there, such as left tackle uh, Darian Kennard as a senior. Looking forward to seeing exactly how he's going to improve this season. Uh, you know, Kentucky's offensive line, they've got two seniors on there. It'll be uh, interesting to see if that can hold up. And if Kentucky can uh, get an offense moving this season... They can possibly be a really, really good team, so I'm excited to see how that'll go. On the wide receiver core, I think the big guy that we all need to watch for is Josh Ali. He's coming in on his senior year. One of the greatest uh, wide receivers, I think, for the SEC this season. I think uh, he's extremely underrated in terms of how he's performed, and I'm looking forward to seeing how he will do this season. Now, as for the defense, which if, if you guys saw my SEC preview, you know that I really, really like Kentucky's defense this season. They are absolutely loaded with senior after senior, and more importantly, loaded with levels of talent, starting with uh, Josh Pascal, who I think is going to be one of the greatest defensive ends 
uh, in the entirety of the SEC. Uh, he's going to be, in my opinion, one of the greatest players on that team. And uh, you definitely need to watch for him. Another player, Mark Juan McCall, senior coming in for the season. Who else? Jordan Wright and DeAndre Square, both seniors. Jaquez Jones, transfer from Ole Miss, coming in as a senior as well. And uh, it, the list just goes on. Kentucky is jam-packed with uh, defensive playmakers coming in on their final year for the Wildcats. So no doubt this is going to be a very impactful season for all of these players. So that being said, there's definitely a lot of talent on this team. So do not be shocked in the slightest if you see Kentucky come out and have a pretty good season. So I'm going to go ahead and start my predictions and... For going on from there, I'll reveal the first six games and my predictions, and then after the first six, I'll reveal the uh, the last six as well. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get it started. So starting off, they go up against Louisiana Monroe, and uh, come on, you lose to Louisiana Monroe, and uh, m- many of the wins that you see on this list so far, you can already forget about those. So yes, I do thank you beat Louisiana Monroe. After that, you play Missouri. Now, Missouri this season is going to have a pretty good offense. Uh, Eli Drinkwitz, Drinkwitz is doing a really, really good job of making a what I think is going to be a really, really good offense this season. They have, they have a... I mean, they, they just have a loaded offense this season. You look at what they're bringing in for the quarterback, Connor Basilak coming in in, uh, in his sophomore year. An underrated talent for sure. And uh, Mookie Cooper, who they actually have as a transfer, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. Furthermore, I just think Missouri overall this season is going to be like the Ole Miss of the SEC East, where they have a really good offense, but their defense, not so much. But we'll have to see how that goes. I do think Kentucky is going to get the win here. I think their defense is going to come up big here against Missouri and get enough stops for them to win the game. After that is Chattanooga, and same thing here. I think they're, well, with Chattanooga, though, I think they stand no chance in this game. Uh, I mean, come on. And Tennessee in 2019 beat Chattanooga by 40 points even after losing to Georgia State and BYU. I do not think you should have any trouble against Chattanooga. Then you got a good matchup here, SEC rival South Carolina on the road, traveling to williams Bryce. The thing is about this game and this rivalry is, uh, you know, Kentucky's always had a number over South Carolina in many, many instances. So I honestly think that with that being said, that Kentucky goes on the road and gets the win against South Carolina. Not to mention the fact that, you know, with uh, with everything that's happened with Will Muschamp and uh, Shane Beamer coming in and having to basically pull off a entire rebuild with South Carolina... It's going to take a lot of time to really build up a a, a, a a really talented offense. Now, Kevin Harris, I think, is going to do a pretty good number, but the defensive line, I think, is going to come up big here for Kentucky and get the win against South Carolina. After that is Florida. Now, Florida, I actually have this game as a win for Kentucky because tr- Kentucky's traveling really high up this season in terms of talent, and Florida, of course, has really fallen down. And, uh, you know, they lose Kyle Trask, Kyle Pitts, many other big playmakers. And Florida is bringing in Emory Jones, who I think is not a bad quarterback at all. I think he's going to be a pretty good quarterback this season, especially in terms of the dual threat that that he's bringing in for, uh, for Florida. But the issue with that is, in my opinion, that going up against a really stout defensive line like Kentucky, I think they are going to be all over Kyle Trask. I do not think that offensive line is going to hold up very well for him. And I just don't think Florida is going to have enough room on offense to be able to get the win here against Kentucky. I think Kentucky is just going to do just enough to get the win at home against the Gators. So they start off in a, in a pretty impressive 5-0, and but I think uh, the luck runs out against LSU. I think LSU beats you. Even at home, I think LSU is going to be a very improved team this season. You could flip uh, both Florida and LSU. You could have them lose to Florida and win against LSU, but I think uh, the results would be the same, 5-1. Now, the thing is with the LSU game, Max Johnson 
coming in as the starting quarterback for LSU. I'm really high on him after what I saw him do at the very end of the season, especially against uh, teams like Florida. So that being said, I think LSU is going to be a much more improved team this season. And so I think that they are going to get Kentucky where it hurts and they'll end up getting the win there. But 5-1 and one to start out with I think is pretty good for Kentucky. Now moving on to the second half and I'll go ahead and reveal that. So starting off going on the road against Georgia, I, I uh, Georgia this season is going to be one of the best teams in my opinion. Not just best teams in the SEC, but best teams in all the entire nation. George is probably going to be a top five team throughout the entirety of the college football season, if not top three, because, you know, JT Daniels is finally starting for them. They're bringing it back. They're really, really good defense, have an offense that's rolling. It'll just be pretty much the SEC East is Georgia's to lose. So that being said, I think they, I think, Kentucky does not get the win here against Georgia. I think they pick up a second loss here. But after a bye week, you travel over to the Cowbells at Mississippi State. Mississippi State is kind of a wild card team this season. Mike Leach is bringing in what I think is going to be a much better offense this season. It's just there are a lot of unanswered questions about that Mississippi State defense. Are they going to be able to improve after last season where they were just not they just did not look very good at all? I think they have room to improve for sure, but in terms of playing Kentucky, I do not think this will end up too good for them. I think uh, Will Rogers, just like how Emory Jones might be, is going to be running around for his life. So that being said, I think Kentucky goes out on the road and gets the win against Mississippi State. Now, for Tennessee, you know, you're traveling at home against Tennessee. This is going to be a big game for Kentucky. I have this one as a loss. And one of the reasons I do have it as a loss is because it's just a weird thing with Kentucky that no matter which season is in, excluding last year, Tennessee has always had Kentucky's number. It's just been a weird thing that Kentucky, no matter which season they're in or how, uh, no matter how good they look or how bad Tennessee looks, Tennessee's always been able to get the win over Kentucky. And uh, even in a season like this, I know Tennessee's got some rebuilding to do, but it's not nearly as bad as what South Carolina is going through, in my opinion. They are losing what I think are some really good players, and Henry Toa Toa, Eric Gray, Brent Smagley, and many, many more. But it's not like we're like BYU or Northwestern and losing 75% of our team, excluding a bunch of walk-ons and, and stuff like that. Tennessee is bringing back in a lot of talent. Harrison Bailey, I think, is going to be a very good quarterback this season. And I think by this time in the season, I think uh, Tennessee will have their guy in in the quarterback position. And the main difference is for Tennessee is the offensive line. Other than Wanya Morris, which I think is a huge loss to that offensive line, no doubt, I think Tennessee's offensive line is going to be pretty underrated this season. And I think they'll be able to get the win here against Kentucky. And I think that's where they'll pick up their third loss. But everything after that, in my opinion, I think is a landslide victory for Kentucky. Going on the road against Vanderbilt, I see no issue with this game at all. Vanderbilt this season, uh, and of course, another rebuild season for them. But the difference is they just do not have any talent to go off of. Uh, You know, they were 0-9 last season. I'm not even sure. It's going to be a while until we see Vanderbilt get an SEC victory, and so I think Kentucky will have no problem with this one. New Mexico State, kind of the same thing here. I think they're a little more, I think they're a little less talented than Vanderbilt, so that being said, if you if you beat Vanderbilt easily, then you should beat this one even easier than that, so that's all that, are, that there is to say about that. And then finally, you finish out with Louisville, which I do have as a win for Kentucky, because the thing is about the Cardinals this season, After Lamar Jackson left, it's been nothing but torture for Louisville. I think Malik Cunningham has potential to grow as a quarterback junior year coming in for him. But, you know, this is going to be... I, I, The thing is with Louisville is that they just do not have enough talent, in my opinion, to compete with Kentucky on this regard. I think there's going to be a pretty big talent gap in this game between the two teams. And I think the defense is going to give Malik Cunningham uh, quite a bit... (laughs) to run for 
So we'll be. I'm looking forward to seeing if there's any dual threat, if two Cunningham, but we'll have to see. Either way, I think this is going to be a win for Kentucky. And that finishes their regular season record at a pretty good 9-3, 5-3 in the SEC. Now, I believe there are going to be some Kentucky fans that are going to be telling me, or, or at least uh, typing an angry message in the comments telling, telling me why I gave you the loss to uh, Tennessee or LSU. And, uh, of course, you can go back and listen to my reasoning on that. But if you have anything else or any objections or you just want to agree with me, then feel free to leave a comment in the comment section and tell me how you feel. And I'll look forward to taking a look at it and maybe responding to you. And I'll do my best to uh, do just that. Anyway, that'll wrap it up here. Again, Kentucky, I have finishing at 9-3, and 5-3. and three, So n not a bad season at all. So there you go. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you give this video a like. And more importantly, subscribe to Squid Tart Sports. We're, of course, on this channel. We're on the road to... Uh, we're just moving up in the ranks. And then for the main channel, I've got that movie coming out, The Wharf Tart Area, which I'm continually working on. So if you'd like and you're interested in memes and, and stuff like that, feel free to go check that out and take a look and see if you're interested in any of the content over there. Anyway, that'll wrap it up here. We'll have more SEC teams coming up very shortly. Uh, until then, we'll see you guys in the next video. Power to Tardaria, and thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you all in the next one.